Hey guys, welcome to our special security training. We've been getting some calls lately from people saying they're getting some strange emails. You know, people asking for credit card information, passwords, that kind of thing. So we thought we'd get everybody together and uh, just show them how to handle that stuff if they get them. So as you may or may not know, fishing is the fraudulent practice of... Sorry, we're late, guys. We had to find a parking spot for the boat. Nice vest, guys. Anyway... Back to what I was talking about. So fishing is the fraudulent practice. Hey, Dave. Yes, Heath. Hey, we just wanted to say how excited we are that Bendix has given us some training on some new fishing techniques. Oh, well, you're welcome, Heath. Oh, yeah. We've been out there for days. Haven't caught nothing. Not one fish. We really need some help. Well, I can't argue with you there. What? Look, I think you guys might be a little confused, okay? More than usual on this one. This is not training about catching a fish. F-I-S-H-I-N-G. This is an IT term. Fishing. P-H-I-S-H-I-N-G. Huh? Is that a French fly fishing magazine or something? No, Heath. Phishing is the type of email that tries to trick you into giving them personal information, like credit cards and passwords and stuff like that. What about your favorite fishing spots? Aaron, this is not training about catching a fish. This is about receiving emails that are trying to get your personal information. Like your favorite fishing spot. I don't want anybody to know where mine is, not even Heath. What? Okay, sure. And your favorite fishing spot. Boy, why do I always draw the short straws on these things? Um, okay. So let's take a look at what a real phishing email would look like. Now, as you can see, it's, it could be just as simple as asking for some information. Could be from your bank, could be from your credit card company, could be from somebody you know. Okay? It could have the logo of the bank right in the middle. It could have a, a link to what it looks like the bank's website. But these are fake sites, and they're looking for your real passwords and usernames. But if they look real, well, how do we know? You might not know. And that's why you want to verify the information before you click on that website. Basically, never trust any email which prompts you for urgent action. Like requesting your personal info immediately or asking you to log into a site right away. If you get one of these emails, you can call the bank directly or ask them about it. Or even better, go into the bank. If they really need updated info, you can do that there. But you said before I click the link. What's wrong with just going to the website? Because the link can do way more than just take you to a website. I mean, it can download and install malware or other malicious software onto your PC, which will attack your computer and send your information to anywhere in the world, to anyone in the world. So never click on any link unless you know it's safe. So we know it's safe by calling the bank? Sure, uh, but normally banks don't send out emails looking for this stuff. So really, your best bet is just delete the email. Or you can put it in the KB spam reporting folder in Outlook, and it's just gone. That's what I do with all the emails I get from Dave. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But you see, phishing is not just limited to emails. I mean, can it can be any kind of fraudulent communication, like a phone call. Let's say you get a call from somebody that says, uh, we can make your computer faster. Must not be somebody from our IT department. <laughs> Look, Red Green, can we try to focus here? Okay. So anyway, the caller asks for your credit card information to pay for this needed service. And then he'll have you go to his website. After that, they got total control of your computer. They've got your money, they got your credit card info, and they got plenty of other information for the perfect identity theft scenario. That's not good. I have my map to my favorite fishing spot saved on my computer. What can we do about it? Easy. Just hang up. Wait. So the way to stop phishing is to delete the email and hang up the phone? Yep, simple as that. Don't give them anything. Remember, these are criminals that are trying to steal your personal information. Don't worry about offending them. They'll just send out another email or call the next number in the book. So remember, there's a few things to check if you receive an email you suspect is phishing for your personal information. Check the sender's address. Does it look like it belongs to the suggested sender? An email asking for urgent action is a big phishing tip-off. If you have an account with this institution, contact them right away. Check to see to whom the email is directed. A non-specific greeting like, dear user, <laughs> dead giveaway. They're phishing. Remember, 
Don't take the bait. Bad grammar can be another sign of phishing. Or it could just be an email from me. Either way, make sure the email makes sense and the dialogue flows naturally. Never click on a link from an unknown sender. And always contact unknown senders to verify links you may receive from them. Now one trick to verifying a link is hovering your mouse pointer over the link until it displays the path. Now if the path doesn't match the link or doesn't make sense, don't click on it. Delete the email. Alright, that's all I got. Any questions? Boy, that fishing training isn't helping us out here. Nope, we haven't caught a single fish. And you found my favorite fishing spot. Oh, so it's my fault. Do you see anybody else out here? Well, you know what? I'm not telling you where my fishing spot is. Oh, you don't is. have one. Yes, I do. It's right here. Well, you need to find a new spot. Well, maybe you need to find a new spot. Well, maybe you should get off my boat. Maybe I will. Well, maybe I'll just toss you off.